Hey everybody, my name is Seth. Welcome to the abridged version of Mars through Libra. Um, that's what we're going to be covering today. If you like what you see and you want to donate and see the full version of this video or just donate to support this channel, then you can hop on to the link I'm going to put somewhere, probably below, for uh, the Cant Virgo Astrology Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Astrology. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram. That's where I'm kind of shuffling things over uh, right now. That's where I'm going to be spending most of my time. You can always leave a comment if you want as well. But if you really want to get fast, direct communication, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Instagram, or just send me an email. All that shit's down below. Look forward to hearing from you. Enjoy. So Mars is a planet, or the planet of projection, and the consequences of projection for better or for worse. Um, you're dealing with a planet that can project things like passion. So that's where you see uh, Mars being associated with things like sex and violence. Um, you can also see Mars projecting things like uh, power, where you can see uh, Mars being associated with war, and especially with this Mars placement, uh, Mars being uh, associated with aggressive peacekeeping treaties. Really, that's what Mars is really all about, affecting its world, affecting what goes on around itself based on actively projecting outward and affecting what's going on around itself. So Mars is the archetypal masculine, like Venus is the archetypal feminine. It does not mean that Mars means man. This is not uh, the cultural interpretation of masculine. This is archetypal. So it just means that it's an active participant. So you see Mars having a purpose or having purposes that surround advancement, uh, propagation, uh, winning, um, uh, uh, originating, encountering. It's, it's activating words. Mars is an activator. And Though Mars does have a purpose, when you see Mars in a natal chart or transiting, when you when you start to um, throw in factors like human beings into the mix, you, you start to need a motivation for this purpose. Um, to propagate what? To win at what? To advance in what? Those are the sorts of questions that we answer as people with Mars. So this on. card is the tower. This is the card that represents Mars in the tarot. Now... This card is definitely associated with the idea of destruction and painful destruction. And I think what, what this card really represents is progress that is not convenient. You're going to move. You're going to move forward. You're going to change. You're going to progress. And it's just not going to be on your time frame where you're comfortable or with people you decide to progress with. It's, it, you have no real control over this progression. And I think when we don't have control over progress, we decide that it is uh, destruction. The same thing as if we, don't, if we don't have control over opportunity, which is more of a Uranus thing. We don't have control over opportunity. We tend to call it destruction. You're gonna have to run and win and, and at least compete to be able to, to have Mars be a productive part of your chart, be a productive part of your life, to have your masculine tendencies, again, not cultural archetypal, your masculine tendencies to have a healthy outlet. You're going to need to win or lose. You know what I mean? Fight or lose. Uh, uh, you, you play or die. With Mars, there's no real in between. You have to do something, and you're going to run. You're going to compete, or else this card is going to become very literal. So this card is called Adjustment, and it represents Libra in the tarot. Also, I'm using the Crowley deck, so this is why um, you're not seeing traditional imagery here. And and it has a lot to do with that very overused term in astrology, uh, detachment. And um, again, a very overused term that usually, I wouldn't say unfairly, but more often than not, overly associated with Aquarius. Libra is the energy that differentiates between justice and fairness. What is fair is not always what is just, and what is just is not always what is fair. And also, that really means what is fair is not always what is right. Because that's what it's coming down to with justice. Justice is what is right. And what is fair is not always conducive. They're not uh, 
They are Society. mutually exclusive. People who are on a different level than everyone else. And it's not just because of money. That's not how high society was always defined. It was because you were refined and, and maybe it was because you had the opportunity, you had the privilege to do so, but that's a different matter altogether. The idea is that you were refined, you were able to master something to some extent and to present your mastery in a way where you can kind of tell the difference between someone who has done it and someone who is not someone who is refined and someone who is not so you are more than likely to gravitate towards what uh is closer to where you are right but once you do that once you enter this society high society uh, refined society whatever you want to call it or even um i was gonna say a guild <laughs> nerd <laughs> but a guild works like uh you enter into even if like you're, you're trying to now separate groups of people into smaller more refined sex and and once you have those sex that's when you get the adjustment because you're going to come into this world and realize it is us and then it is them and there needs to be justice because we're not the only ones that exist. There are people who are better than us. There are people who are lesser than us based on our priorities, which again, this is all, things are becoming rocketing into complexity that has never existed within the Zodiac before. This is why a Libra is associated with the devil. Um, it's Pandora's box, really. You, you enter back into society and you have almost too much information and you can kind of walk in and, and suddenly other people exist and you understand that they have the same drives as you they have the same stories as you they 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 have the same level of complexity and nuance and and context as you because you weren't always this high society person you weren't always this carpenter you couldn't always have a title you had to work your way there so you understand their world and you understand your world and you now have to balance them now, I'm sure this isn't the most recognizable way to kind of lead into Libra, the, the fanciful, high-class, um, serial dating <laughs> sort of um, archetype that, that we like to um, throw onto Libra in pop astrology. But this is because it's the idea of what Libra represents without us, really. It, it's, 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 it's the idea of Libra looking at us looking at the sun looking at mars looking at jupiter looking at any other planet not the planet looking at libra when you see mars and libra like we're going to eventually discuss um when you look at jupiter and libra we look at the sun and libra you're looking at the sun's version of that energy you're looking at jupiter's version of that energy we're going to be looking at mars uh version of that energy for a second before i flip the script but um that's what we're looking at. When you see a planet in Libra in your chart, when you see a Libra on a house cusp or even intercepted in your chart, it's the house giving you a version of Libra. You're not seeing what Libra is about. You're seeing what Libra can be based on these factors that we are throwing in. All right, so before we launch in, we have to get this out of the way. We have to discuss the Deccans what the Deccans are, why they're important, and why they are um, so intricately connected to astrology and the tarot. So the Deccans are the, uh, the divisions of the signs, right? We all know that the zodiac wheel is 360 degrees, and each sign has its own 30 degree block of that. That's how you get to 360. 12 signs, 30 degrees, 360 degrees total. So if we were to zoom in, <laughs> on each sign we're going to find that there are blocks within each sign to go from aries to taurus taurus to gemini gemini to cancer cancer to leo so on and so forth it's not like one stops and the other one just starts there's a fluidity to this there there's no angles here it's a circle one leads into the other so it's a constant fluid motion and we see that when you zoom in from zero degrees to nine degrees of any sign is its first decan. From 10 degrees to 19 degrees of any sign is its second decan. And from 20 degrees to 29 degrees of any sign is its third decan. Now, why this is important for this video is because what I just discussed, 
those three decans and how they evolve and, and what goes on between each sign is perfectly represented within the tarot. Let's launch in and let's talk about what each decan of Libra represents. This is the card that represents the first decan of Libra. It is the Two of Swords and it is called Peace in the Crowley deck. With the first decan of Libra, we are understanding the idea of trial and error, the idea of balancing the mind and the emotions. Understanding that when you're making a decision, you need to balance your head with your heart, really, if we're going to use something corny. <laughs> but that idea of, of what you feel may not be what's most rational, and what is most rational may not be good for how you feel. You're going to have to balance them out. And you're going to have to decide if it's yes or no based on this balance. You're going to decide, it's, is this a good thing or is this a bad thing based on that balance. And it's not something you can do without ever trying. You need to practice. You need to make mistakes. You need to grow, grow wise with your mistakes. That's really what wisdom is compared to intelligence. Because you understand what is going to work best. Try to rationalize something and then add in what you feel and make a decision and stick to that decision and then let it the fuck go once you're done. Because if you sit there and you keep analyzing it and you keep trying to tear it apart, you've never actually made the decision. You're, you're not letting yourself actually just go with it and move forward and learn from whatever could have happened because it still could have happened instead of it just happened because you never let it go. So now, as I mentioned, we are in the second decan of Libra, the most Libra decan of Libra that there is, uh, and it's represented by this card right here. This is the Three of Swords, and it is called Sorrow in the Crowley deck. What we're seeing is Libra just needing to settle in to being a winner, having, again, the fortitude to stand behind its decisions. You balanced out what was rational, what was emotional, and you made a decision. When you have Mars in this decan, it kind of comes inherently to you to do that. If you're someone who struggles with your Mars placement, it's probably because you're not settled in that first decan energy. You're, you're kind of fighting against yourself because it should come naturally to just balance things out and make a decision. Making a decision is not hard with this decan. Having the fortitude to stand behind that decision is what's hard. Justice is not something we all share. It is personal. And you need what you just did with the first decan was find your version of justice. That is the scales that come with Libra, what is rational and what you feel. There are always going to be consequences, but that does not change all the effort that you put into ba balancing things out. All because it's not fair doesn't mean it's not right. Stand behind your decisions. That is what this card is about. And again, I know this isn't um, the most typical. When you say the most Libra of Libra energies, you don't really think fortitude and sticking with a decision. But that's why this card is called Sorrow. Because these the tarot is a warning, not a literal interpretation. This is what is going to happen if you fuck up. Do what you want to do. Do what feels right. Do what makes sense. And stand behind it. And then you get the aggressive peace treaty type of Libra. You get the Gandhi type of Libra. You get the... I really hate to say it, but... Of course, it's easy for us to point at it and look at what's wrong and what could be and how they're fucking up and what's, what's fucked up and what's this and what's that. But they would not be successful. We would not know their names if they weren't following their own personal justice. They did and they do what they do and they stand behind it. And that is why we know them. That is why Libra is anywhere we can see them because of this second decan fortitude. So lastly, we find ourselves in the third decan of Libra, and that is represented by this card right here. It is the Four of Swords, and it is called Truce in the Crowley deck. It's potential for good or potential for bad, but there was no such thing as good or bad until Libra. So this is a very powerful, very complex placement. What we're really finding 
as that thin line between contentment and numbness. We kind of already reached the peak with the second decan of Libra. You, you learned how to make decisions. You learned how to make decisions understanding uh, your personal justice, your personal rationality and, and personal, it's more than rationality because we had it in emotion. It really is justice. Your own personal justice, your own personal deeming of what's good and what's bad for you, for the world, based on you. And um, you, you, you learn to stand behind them. You learn to see what, what is possible when you stand behind them. And what you do from that point on is win. And win, and win, and all you do is win. All you do is win, 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 win. And you get bored sometimes. Libra definitely gets bored when all they do is win. If everything's too good, especially Mars in the last decade of Libra, if everything's too good, things can get a little dicey. Things can get a little uh, unpredictable. And it's because there's a thin line between being content and being numb. You choose your problems so all the other problems can go the fuck away. They don't matter because you chose the ones that are priorities. Libra taught Scorpio how to do that because Libra had too much of a good thing. So when Libra has too much of a good thing, it needs to start building outside of itself and more money, more problems. <laughs> and that's what Libra really finds. It's going to get bigger and it's going to want to be, build bigger than itself, which means that you're going to, you're choosing to have an issue. When you decide to run your own business instead of just get a job, you are choosing a problem. When you decide to have kids and you did not understand, or maybe even you do understand, what you have to do to afford them, you are still deciding to take on debt. When you get married, you are deciding to take on the pressure of getting along with someone and not divorcing them, not murdering them. You can even say that for dating, for some people with uh, Saturn in their seventh and every relationship is a fucking marriage. Um, it, it's, it's, it's the idea of, of the responsibility of being successful and 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 the the issues that come from growth hopefully you guys are enjoyed hopefully you guys are, are understanding where i'm coming from here and and getting a good feel for how the tarot is associating with astrology and how that opens up a brand new perspective on how we can um interpret these astrological placements these astrological bodies these astrological segments in, in space hey everybody thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it i hope even though you haven't seen the full version that i've whetted your appetite to see the full version and also that i've given you something to take away from this video even though it is not everything that you could take away from this video so i want to thank you for watching it i want to thank you for supporting my channel through likes and subscribing hit that bell icon so you can know when my new videos are coming out and i also want to urge you again to go to patreon.com slash astrology to donate support the channel watch the full versions see the new series that are going to be coming um i will continue to put out exclusive series maybe not always continuing to put out previews, but um, hopefully you guys will be there for the ride and not miss out. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, stay tuned because you never know when I'll be talking about you next.